uh, we're going to go ahead and jump in to our next speaker. This will be Vanessa Volker from Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves, and she will be talking about the Kentucky Botanist Big Year and iNaturalist Overview and Awards. So welcome, Vanessa. Thank you, Kendall. And I will share my screen. All right, so like Kendall said, um, I am talking about the 2023 iNaturalist highlights and the big year winners. And uh, so if anybody's unfamiliar with iNaturalist, this is uh, the big year is a friendly competition um, to see how many plant species that you can find in a single year. Um, participants record their observations with photos, date information and location information using the iNaturalist mobile app or the website. Um, and you do not need to be a, a botanist or, or even know what you're looking at to use the app or to participate. Uh, one of the great things about iNaturalist is it provides an AI tool to help you uh, identify what you're looking at. And it's also a global community uh, that includes thousands of biologists and taxonomic experts that will uh, check out your observation and help you identify uh, if you're not sure what you're looking at. Um, so the uh, the rules of our contest are very simple. Uh, you just need to join the Kentucky Botanist Big Year Project on the website. You can upload your observations. It must be of a plant. It can be native or non-native, vascular or non-vascular. Uh, it needs to be within the current calendar year. And the observation must reach research grade, which means that at least one other individual has confirmed the species identification. And this provides just a rough measure of data quality. So when the, uh, when the results for the year are finally tallied, we give award prizes for three categories, which are uh, most observations, most species, and most identifications. So a few quick stats for 2023, we had almost, uh, over 12,000 plant observations comprised of almost 1,400 species. We had 49 participants and a global community of 673 identifiers that helped us identify all these plants. And you can see from the map that the observations for last year, for this past year's project, generally clustered around urban areas and areas with large public natural area spaces, such as uh, the DVNF and Land Between the Lakes in Western Kentucky. And I just wanted to highlight a few notable rare species observations that participants made in 2023. Um, every year, there are dozens of rare species observed by iNatters in Kentucky, and this is really valuable data for us at OKNP. Um, we, we use this data to update our rare plant database, and uh, this often provides uh, new rare plant population records as well as updates. And um, so last year, uh, some of my favorites were uh, cow parsnip, Heraclium linnatum. This was observed by a user in northeastern Kentucky. And uh, according to our best data, prior to this observation, we had listed the species as historic in the state. So this was really awesome. We, we really didn't have any data about this species occurring in Kentucky for the last at least 20 years. So this observation knocked the species back into extant in the state. And this is, uh, it's a state endangered plant. Another state endangered plant um, that we had several observations of in Western Kentucky is Ruelia pedunculata, stocked wild petunia. And, uh, this is a plant that we had only known from Livingston County uh, before last year when it was documented in LBL by another um, iNaturalist user. And this year there were four more observations, which is really fleshing out our data for this new county record. And uh, you can observe rare plants even if you are not intending to. So this, this user had photographed the common species flowering spurge. It's in the foreground, it's these little white flowers. It's very distinctive even when it's out of focus like it is in this photo. But in the background of the photo, you can see this sort of long leaved inconspicuous plant and that's grass leaved prairie aster, Eurybia hemispherica. 
Um, so we occasionally see rare plants in the background of photos, and, and this is a really fun way for us to get data as well. And having said all that, uh, we'll move on to the winners of this last year's big year. So for most identifications, Bill Powell uh, was our winner with 3,443 identifications. And this was, um, on iNaturalist, there are usually more uh, observers than identifiers. And the work of identification is really important because it's really what makes iNaturalist um, what it is. Uh, having people help us with identifications is so crucial. And, and so every year I try to encourage people to do these observations, whatever you can contribute, whatever you know and can share knowledge about is really helpful. And Bill answered this call uh, in a really prodigious way. And what I appreciate about Bill is that he'll often uh, tag me in observations where he thinks the observation might be of interest to me, whether it is a rare plant or something that needs identifying. And um, I really appreciate how active he's been this past year in the uh, identifying. And this is a photo that he actually took of you can see there are a few clusters here where the flowers, which are usually blue on the bottom and white on top, are all Bill saw, um, I think, close to his own house in the woods. And for most observations, Rena Tuttle Wheeler won. Uh, Rena uh, previously lived in Louisville, but has moved to Massachusetts. It's our last but Massachusetts skein. Um, one thing I really appreciate about her observations are, is that they, they're often within the city limits. And Rena has a really keen eye for seeing obscure and uh, not very showy plants that other people are most likely to overlook. So the three plants in the photos here from left to right are, um, are Parietaria pennsylvanica, Bassius coperia and Salsola tragus. These are each fairly weedy species. Um, and as I said, rather obscure. They're in families where the flowers are small and they're just very easy for people to overlook. Um, but the, the latter two species, uh, this was the first year that they were actually observed by eye netters in Kentucky. Um, and I, I just really appreciate her attention to detail. All of our observations are very, uh, intentional and thoughtful, and she takes a lot of care to photograph details of these small flowers or just interesting morphologies. And I, I really enjoy seeing her observations of these weedy but interesting urban plants. And uh, for most species, Melody Cunningham, who spends a lot of time birding and botanizing in LBL, was our winner with 492 species. Uh, Melody actually had my very favorite rare plant observation this past spring. In April, she was birding in a swampy area of LBL and came across a plant that had um, interesting and unique looking leaves. So you can see that they are toothed on top and very laciniate and deeply divided on the bottom. And so just curious to know what it was, she took a few photos and uploaded those. And I think I saw them the same day and reached out to her and mentioned that they looked a lot like lake cress, which is a state threatened species here in Kentucky. Um, and I just mentioned if she happened to be back in that area, she might keep an eye out in the coming weeks because it should be blooming. It has small white flowers. They're not very showy, but it would help to confirm the ID. Um, and I didn't really expect that she would necessarily go back because she she likes to get out and explore all around that natural area. But uh, vastly exceeding my expectations, Mel went back to the same site at least five times over the next few weeks, uh, just tromping through muddy water, uh, or muddy woods and standing water to see these plants. And every few days she would email me with updates to let me know that she'd found a few plants here, another dozen plants here, several hundred more plants. And then she finally found them in bloom. And it was it's it was just really heartwarming to get these updates from her and to see how excited she was to see this rare plant. Um, this uh, 
the plants that she saw were actually in a location that we had really old data about. They were initially documented in the early 80s, um, but they had not been revisited by botanists since then. So the data that we had on these plants was at least 40 years old. Um, and so having Mel go out there and thoroughly document the location and numbers of plants um, was really helpful to us in maintaining our rare plant data. And I just really appreciate all these people for their interest and uh, attention to detail and curiosity. Um, and finally, I just wanted to mention if you are interested in joining 2024's project, please visit us on iNaturalist. You can just click the join button in the top right corner um, and that will uh, collect all of your observations and you can have fun with us and identify things and um, hopefully find some interesting plants this year. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please ask them now. <laughs>